friends. <laughs> Welcome back to Cardboard from Mars. This is Nemo with my good buddy, Nate. Say hi, Nate. What's up? Nate predicted I was going to be boring, so I'm trying to step it up here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're back after a long time. Uh, sorry to sorry for our absence, but here we are. We're going to do a little card review. We're going back to this for a little while because that's what we feel like. Um, so what do you think, Nate? Have any uh, comments to make? Dude, first thing we're going to grade today is your intro. And I'm giving it a solid B, dude. Solid B. Uh, like the way that you wanted to project energy, but then you like toned down your own voice as you were doing it was hilarious. <laughs> well, that's just good from me feeling too silly about it after a while. But... I know, I know. Um, well, uh, Nima, it is great to be back with you. Uh, I know we haven't done this in a while. Um, we were doing a lot of streams for the awesome terraforming Mars tournament. I hope you guys catch those videos. Um, but we're back, man. I, I'm excited to do this one with you, uh, and to get back to our card grades. Yeah, man. So why don't we just get right into it? We got a banger to start with electro catapult. Why don't you run us through it? Yeah, you know what I'm realizing is that we don't have our grading scale up right now. Um, uh, so why don't you run through this and let me work on the grading scale for a second. Okay. Okay, Electro Catapult costs 17. Uh, you need to put it out before there's 8% oxygen. It's got a building tag. And so it's a blue card, so you can do use it once a generation. And basically for the cost of either a plant or a steel... You can get seven money once per generation. It does also cost a power resource. Not a, sorry, not a power resource, a power um, like generation. Um, and then on top of that, you just get one point. So I, you know, I said this is a, a banger. Um, why, why, why do you think it's a banger, Nate? Oh man, Electro Catapult is awesome. Um, I think that Electro Catapult is one of the strongest cards in the game. I mean, obviously there's some situational, you know, sort of um, issue with it and that it's better early, uh, but it's just so efficient at generating money and it has a great building tag and it's a point. I mean, it's just, this card's awesome. Yeah, it, it really is one of like the, the power cards in Terraforming Mars. Uh, it, you know... I think we've seen it just make great economies almost on its own many times. Uh, like you know, it, you know, you mentioned it's great early. I mean, this card almost force like forces that right in some some way, like giving it max eight. Well, max eight percent oxygen can be late game, but sometimes it's not. So you you do want to get it out early for sure. I mean, the, the fact that this has a point on it is just, yeah. it's just, uh, it just puts it over the top. I mean, basically, you know, we've, we've had this discussion before about how many credits is a point worth. And, you know, it's, it's somewhere between five and six, po you know, credits somewhere in there. Yeah. So, I mean, if you said to me, okay, you can have a card that costs about 10 or 11 credits and it's going to generate you seven credits per generation. That's really strong. And it has a building tag, which is awesome too. So um, Electro Catapult is one of those games, like you said, Nima, it's like an economy in a single card. And I, I can't tell you how many games that I've had that have been saved by this card. You yeah, know, like right. where you're opening, your opening cards are kind of lackluster and you're just like, what? oh man, what am I going to do? And, and then you get, you open up Electro Catapult on Gen 2 and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm back in it. You know, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it's... It's this card is just awesome, um, and and there's nothing worse than that sinking feeling that you get when somebody plays this on turn one or two. Yeah, you, you, all of a sudden the game just went really uphill for you. Like uh, what's coming to mind to me is like this is an amazing Thorgate starting card, right? Oh yeah. So you got Thorgate, you have that power that is just you're just ready to use. If you get this, it's like man, I don't even have to spend the money to get the power. Because, you know, at the end of the day, 17, it's it's not really 17, is it? It's 17 plus whatever, whatever you needed to spend to get the power. But if you're Thorgate, you don't need to do that. That's totally true, Nima. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that's worth noting about this card is that there is some skill to playing it. Because deciding what you want to sell, whether it's a steel mm -hmm. or a plant, or making sure that you have those resources available, 
Right. There is some skill involved with that, and you'll you'll find that good players really maximize the benefit of this card. Um, you definitely don't need to play this card until you can use it, right? So you you don't want to go through contortions to play this on turn one just to not yeah. have something to sell. So you, you do want to think about when you're going to play this card to maximize it. And it is worth noting that um, there are several cards which steal resources. You know, there's the card that takes two steel cubes, and there's uh, many cards that hit plants. And so you just want to be cognizant of, of those cards when you play Electro Catapult and make sure that you play around that. Um, so start your generation off by, by activating the Catapult if there's a chance that those resources could be stolen. Yeah. Um, save a tile type of card in your hand to pick up a resource if you need it, if somebody steals them. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can play around that. Right. Yeah, oh, great points. Um, you know, to that end, it's... It, it, it is probably basic, but if you're fairly new to this game, you, you want to watch out that you don't use all of your resources in the generation. And, and Nate was alluding to this, but like, you know, make sure you've used your catapult before you use all your steel or plants or whatever it is that generation. Yeah, great point, Nima. Like if you don't have a way to generate steel and you and you somehow played a tile and got a few steel, save it for the catapult, right? I mean, right. obvious. And then the last comment I'll make about the Catapult is that my play pattern with Catapult is usually I sell plants early and then I switch to selling steel late. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is that in the beginning, I tend to want every credit I can for card deployment. Um, and so I want to keep the steel as a bonus for playing cards. Uh, but towards the end of the game, you might have a steel engine where you're generating more steel than you might actually end up spending. And yeah. so at that point, the steel is just free money. Um, so that's my typical play pattern with it. And then on top of that, the plants are better late game, right? So that, yeah. that, that makes perfect sense. So Nima, right. bring it home, man. What are you thinking? Grading, what, what's your grade for Electro Catapult? I mean, I think this is just an A, man. It's one of the best cards in the game. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you, you could quibble and call it A- minus because it's really, it's really an early mid-game card, but um, I, I agree with you. It's just an A. It's, the card is awesome, and you guys should always play it if you, if you have the opportunity. Yep. Okay, you ready for the next one? Do it. Okay, energy saving. So hmm. energy saving, 15 credits, it has a power tag, and what this does is it increases your energy production one step for each city tile in play. What are your thoughts, Nima? This is a, this this feels like one of those really situational cards, right? I, I'm, I'm I, when you were, you know, describing the card itself, I was thinking of the scenarios where you would want this. Um, it's basically like you'd play this mid to late game and you need a lot of power. Okay, so what are the situations where you're mid to late game and you want a lot of power? I don't know, um, physics, uh, I guess. Physics complex. Like or... Physics complex. Uh, I, like I can't, I'm trying, I'm struggling to think of a lot of scenarios where you would need two, three, four, five power late game. I mean, I guess if you're trying to lay down a bunch of cities, yeah, I mean, that could be good, but there's already a bunch of cities down, presumably, if you're playing this. What do you think? Yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I think what you're, the, the struggle that you're having is the problem with the card, yeah. which is, you know, when when is it good? And and so, like, how much energy do you need out of energy saving before it's good? Like, let's compare this to Giant Space Mirror or something like that. Um, that costs 17 credits for three energy production. So that's a pretty decent card. So, like, is energy saving, uh, if you get three power production out of it, that's not bad, right? Like, you know, I... I so I think for me, the, the, the point at which energy saving starts to become interesting is a minimum of three power. Mm -hmm. And the problem is by the time that you're at that point in the game, you may just not need the power anymore. Like, yeah. I, you know, usually this is by the time there's three cities down, you know, you're, um, I don't know. And, and also saying like at three power, it's a decent card. Like it's not, you don't even feel like you're doing something busted. So you really no. want four or five cities, right? And I right. don't know. It's so I think the times that you want this are um, just what you said. Like you have a physics complex, or you have a bumper, um, or you just have a bunch of energy cards in your hand, and you just didn't get energy cards, and it's right. just like a kind of a, a bailout. 
Right, right. So yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, that's what I was trying to think of the other uses for is like steelworks, ironworks, that kind of a thing. Problem with that, like you said, is by the time you have enough cities for that to be worth playing, it's probably pretty late game. And the I don't know, it's it's likely that one of the global tracks is almost finished, if not finished. So it's less useful. But it might be, like I said, situational. It's it's very not universally good. Yeah, I mean, there have been times when I've seen people bump their energy production by like twelve. You know, I mean, you know, and if, <laughs> if you if you get a couple of rounds of that, and I mean, there there could be some value to that. I mean, um, so I agree with you. Totally situational. Um, you know, basically, I think its baseline level is a C. Um, maybe even like a C minus, but uh, it, there are moments when it can be what you need. And so it's, it's not something you should just dismiss out of hand. If you, if you need energy, this can produce a lot of energy. Yeah, I'm going C minus on it. It's, you know, per our scale, it's marginally better than a standard project um, at, on average, I would say. When it's good, it's, it's quite good, but it's rare that it's quite good. Yep, I agree with you. So are you, are you on C with with it? I'm or? C minus. I agree with you. Yeah, okay. it's like D plus C minus, really. I mean, it's you know, um, so yeah. Cool. Okay, next card. Energy tapping. Okay. What does this card so, do, Nima? Costs a measly three. It has a power tag. So you can decrease anyone's energy production one step and increase yours by one step. So you're stealing someone's power, basically. There is a negative one point modifier on it. Interesting card. What do you think? Yeah, energy tapping is great. I mean, I um, this 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 card is a is a beating. Um, I mean, <laughs> the you know a lot of a, one of the critiques of Terraforming Mars is that it's not very interactive. Um, but one of the things that I find very interesting about the game is that. There aren't a whole lot of these types of cards, but there's enough of them that really like like really elite play forces you to take these things into account. I mean, yeah. there's just so many times when you're trying to end a turn so that with one energy production, so you can do development center, for example, or you need that one, you know, you play a card that bumps your power by three and you have cards that account for all of that power. Um, or your Thorgate, like you just said, and you want to play Electro Catapult on turn one, and somebody energy taps you before. I mean, that is just a beating. Yeah. And so, um, energy tapping, it's it just it's so it's so impactful in terms of disrupting other people's play, but it also gives you a power for super cheap. So. It's good on the on the disruption end, and it's great for you if you have a card that I mean, imagine the electro catapult energy tapping combo where you take some of these power and play your own electro catapult. Like that is just a huge swing in the game. Right. Yeah. And so, in like to further expand this conversation, I, I started thinking about cards with negative points on them, and to kind of expound on what you're saying the negative point cards when you first start playing this game you you know i i certainly thought to myself why would i i, I never want to play these like why would i want to like decrease my points that's terrible but the the more you play this game and the more experienced you get you start thinking like okay well what does this really buy me you know does like will this turn on my electro catapult like you're saying will this will this get me that city I desperately need? And so you start doing these this calculus in your head and that negative one points all of a sudden doesn't really matter too much to you anymore compared to what it gets you. So, you know, I, I would I would say if you're starting to play this game or if you played it for a while, consider these cards a little more. Don't dismiss them outright. You know, if... If I got a, a you know a, an energy card that didn't decrease my points and was pretty cheap, I'd prefer that obviously. But 
this can be super good. It's so cheap. It it can wreck someone's day, and you know, it gets you a power while you're at it. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, to make this card really shine, it, you want to be getting some value on the on the hate portion of the card, and so yeah. usually, usually this card is the most powerful generations one to four when people are really tight on money and resources and they're really planning out how to how to deploy cards and they need every single power i mean i think the card that we just reviewed energy savings shows you how this this energy tapping card will have diminishing returns late yeah right because like if somebody energy savings for seven like hitting one energy on them doesn't really matter it's it's in the beginning when every energy is critical um and so yeah, that's a great point yeah but i i totally agree with what you're saying Nima. like i used to really hate these cards um but they they are strong i it, the other thing that's worth thinking about is that you know we've talked about this a lot in some of the general strategy videos is that you do have to be careful with the the, the hate cards because in a three-player game yeah you know, if you if you incur a disadvantage to give somebody else a disadvantage, would it would the the tacit part of that equation is that you are giving an advantage to the third person, and so when when I have these hate cards, I really do try and ascertain who is likely to be my main competition, and I try and 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 use the these sorts of cards on that person even if it's not for full value, right? So like if you're right. playing with three people and it's clear that one person is, is way behind, like don't energy tap them because you're actually hurting yourself. It, Very like, good point. Go, go take the time to energy tap your main competition uh, because that way you minimize the impact of, of on yourself. Yeah, we've seen that so many times. Uh, it's just like so, someone tanks the game for you and them when they didn't even realize it. Right, right. So yeah, great point. Well, what do you think? What do you think, uh, Nima? Energy tapping. What are we? What are we giving energy tapping? Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, let's see. B would be usually played substantially better than a standard project. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm leaning B minus on this one. B minus C plus. I think I'm going to go B minus. I'm exactly there with you, Nima. I think B minus C plus. And um, yeah, I mean, you're going to know when when you need this card. Um, I, my final comment, I, and we've said this also in strategy videos before. In the base game, energy is a is a um, it's a desirable commodity. Um, it there there are a lot of cards that produce energy, but for some reason, I often find that that is the limiting factor in really um, preventing me from taking advantage of the most explosive hands. And so that's another thing that makes energy tapping good, which is just that um, you need energy. And so it, it it's cheap energy. So yeah, I, I agree with you. C plus B minus. Cool. Okay. Next one. Eos Casma National Park. So uh, this will be an interesting one. Yeah, this is a cool card. I like this card. Um, 16 credits. Um, you have to be at negative 12 uh, on the heat, so you have to wait to get this card out a little bit. It has a plant tag and a building tag. It bumps your credit production by two. It has a point on it. And when you play this card, um, you get to add an animal to any card, and you gain three plants. To any animal card, to be more specific. Yes, correct. Yeah, sorry. You put an animal on a, on another animal card. Yeah, um, this one I don't have a whole lot of experience with. I think this is one of those cards that I don't know. Either doesn't look great and it is, or it's just kind of meh. Um, well, I mean, let's think here. It's a sixteen, pretty you know, pretty cheap for what it's given you, but the minus twelve, minus twelve probably puts that at mid game. And I don't know. The more I'm looking at it, I'm not liking it that much. Um, three three plants mid game is okay. Uh, the the two the the two credit production mid game again okay. You you're probably not going to make up the 16 credits for sure. I should say 19 credits really. Um, 
I don't know. Like, it seems pretty situational. Like, if if you're going plants, if you've got, I, I think it's it's worth it if you've got the everything synergistic with it. Otherwise, I don't think I like it that much. Yeah, I basically agree with you, Nemo. I mean, this card does like four different things, and it doesn't do any of them particularly efficiently or well. Right. But if you can take advantage of all of those different things, it is strong. I mean, it's good. So when it's good, it's good. But um, it, you know, it doesn't it doesn't get there that often. And I, I think for me, most of the time when I play this card. Um, it's number one, you, you have to be able to take advantage of that animal, right? Like if you have a, a one to one or a one to two point card animal card, then you're already getting some value out of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that really pushes this over the top is the building tag and the plant tag. So if, um, you know, if you have a strategy where you're using plant tags, like if you have nitrogen rich asteroid or if you've got insects or, you know, you, you have like those, uh, the cards that, uh, like ecological zone or cards that essentially let you take advantage of the plant tag, you're starting to put together a package with this that can be quite strong, but you really, you really want to be taking advantage of that plant tag to make this cart at its best. So yeah, I mean, those are my thoughts on this. I mean, Basic. That's, that's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The, the tags are good. I mean, yeah, like building tags are always good. To get you to builder. At plants, plant tags, situational at best. I mean, like you, you laid out the the cases where you really want plant tags. I, I don't know. I don't know that it really puts it over the top. I I may sort of um, have a little bit better view of this card than most because I love playing mining guild. <laughs> right. and, and this is the sort of card that's just awesome in Mining Guild. Because what happens in Mining Guild is you build this huge steel engine. And you often end the game with, an exit, with a surplus of steel. And so you're looking for these sort of marginal cards that other people will pass you that still can be good. And so, like, if you're playing you know, mining guild and you're going to end the game with 25 steel, this could just be a free two or three points for you. And people will pass it to you because the card is not that good on its face. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, it's just worth thinking about how these tags interact with, with, you know, the corporation that you're playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, this card, essentially it's mediocre, but um, it, there are, it, it has its moments. I, you know, I, yeah, come to think of it, like the 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 building tag is probably useless too. Actually, now that I really think about it, because builder's probably gone by the time you'd play this. I think it, it often is, but you never know. And that's where you have to just. This is part of what's cool about terraforming Mars is that these this card can be it can be great or it can just be non playable, and the it all is context dependent, and that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, I think I you know, and I think part of our job is to lay out the contexts that you would want to play this. So, yeah, you know, like yeah, mining guild is one of those. So I, I'm going to give this as probably a C minus, maybe a C. I think what? it's in that range. Um, you know. All right, you you give it that C. <laughs> um, I'm I'm going I'm going D plus on this one. All right, you give you give it the D. I I gave it the D. All right, next card here. Equatorial magnetizer. Nemo, Ooh. what's going on with this card? This will be fun. Um, so this costs eleven. It's got a building tag. So it's a blue card. So once a generation, you can decrease your energy production one step to increase your your terraforming rating one step. That's it. Um, this is a, an interesting one. And by interesting, I mean terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think I've maybe seen it played twice ever. Um, it's a difficult engine to, to get down, and it almost feels like you need to build your strategy around it. 
And that strategy is just not very good because it's just one TR a, a turn. So while that might get you a few points, towards the end of the game, you really want to be scoring way more than that every turn. Um, and yeah, to get the, to get the amount of uh, power production that you need to really take advantage of this, I think it's just too costly. What do you think? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. This card, it just seems terrible to me. And I see people play it early as like a as a strategy and i've just it never wins i it's just energy is good i mean it's a good yeah. resource and so you don't want to cash in for a tr where, where this card does have some value is just at the end of the game when you're trying to score some points and you know if you play this at the end of the game with some excess steel just to score two points that's fine i mean that's 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 a totally reasonable use case um, i just don't like the idea of, of using this as a was sort of an engine strategy um yeah you know but i like i think like i was thinking what would make this card good i think that the card would actually be much better if it was pay two energy score two points to your tr because mm -hmm. i think that like if, if it were if the card were designed that way its use case would be much more last three generations of the game you yeah. know get rid of some excess energy and score some points I think it could be quite strong if 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 it had that modification but the way it's written it's like just a trap like people decide that they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna start this on turn three and it's like you're just hemorrhaging value with these energy tags right or, or like uh, you know two energy for a tr and some other resource right like, yeah i don't know what like some plants or something something that's good late game right uh but yeah no i i, I totally agree with you um i I don't think I've ever once played this card. Um, but yeah, like that's, you're totally right. That's its downfall. It's like, it's just too slow. By the time you, you want to use it, you, you would want to use it. it. You just can't get the points out of it. So uh, yeah, it's just, just a terrible card in my eyes. I mean, even, even as a, even as a, like in this, in the way that it's good, which is, or playable, I should say, which is at the end soaking up a couple points, that's a textbook D. But for yeah. its for the way that people often view this card as an engine, it's just an F. It's a flat F in that context. And so, I mean, I think I think basically this card's just a D minus F. Yeah, I, I, I go F on it. Um I, I it, it's I I mean I know like it, it on on our text writing, it sounds like this should be a D, but yeah, yeah, I think I think you said it well. It's 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 an it's an F to me. All right, man. Um, are you ready for the next one? Oh, here we go. We got some we got some user user comments as well. Straight up F. Thanks, David. We agree. Yeah. Right. If, uh, by the way, feel free to rate the cards along with us, guys. That's we like to see that. All right. Here's one. Here's an interesting conversation. Extreme Cold Fungus. So, mm. Extreme Cold Fungus costs 13 credits. It has to be lower than negative 10 degrees Celsius to play it. Uh, it has a microbe tag on it, and it's a blue card. And once per generation, you can do one of the following. You can either activate this card to make a single plant, or you can activate this card to put two microbes on another card. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot to say about this card because I barely ever used it. But um, so what? What a I, I think you you want to get this card for the microbe ability and not necessarily the plant ability. Like it seems like the plant ability is there if you you just can't use the microbe ability, right? Yeah, I mean that's right. I mean, here's the thing. Like I almost never play this card either, and I I basically I play it as a as an F. I mean, basically, but I think there's a lot of strong players that like this card. And so I'm open to, to the idea that like, I could just be undervaluing this card, but the fundamental problem for me is that, yes, it's great if you get an engine going. Okay. So you, you're making two microbes a turn and you either have like one of the micro bumpers, you know, like one of the ones where you cash in two microbes to bump the heat or something like that, or or the oxygen, or you get uh, two microbes on um, a 
on a card that lets you get three mar microbes for a point. Or, I mean, there are definitely ways to use microbes, but the problem for me is that the, in order for this card to be good, the way that microbes are costed in this game, you usually need, the, the, the point ratios are not so high. So you would want to play Extreme Cold Fungus early so that you can maximize the potential of that engine. But the problem is I'm just never in a spot early game where I want to spend 16 credits on this, you know? Right. Because you're, you're spending 16 credits on this, 13 to play it, 3 to buy it, as well as, let's say, 10 or 12 credits to buy the other card that's complementing it. And then you're basically building an engine that's going to either passively score you points or maybe bump your TR. And it's just not good enough. Like, if you're, if you're talking about spending 30 or, you know, 25 to 30 credits... I would just much rather play something that bumps my titanium production by one and costs a third of that. Sure. Yeah, and it all comes back to microbes just being the weakest strategy in this game, right? And it's this is among the better like if you're playing microbes, you want this card for sure. It's probably one of the best microbe cards. But microbes are the worst strategy. So <laughs> it's um it's just it, it can, by definition it just cannot be that good. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious, you know, for those of you who are who are watching this on the YouTube channel, um, throw in the comments your thoughts about Extreme Cold Fungus. You know, I, for those expert players out there that that have experience with this card that like it, I just find that I just n almost never play it. And the funny thing too, Nima, about this card is that this has happened to me several times, where I'm like, oh, finally, this card's good for me, and I like go to buy it, and I go to play it. And it's like Gen 7, and I'm way beyond the maximum temperature. And I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot that there's this thing on there. You know, like, you can't right, even play right. it. Yeah, why? Yeah, that's an interesting point. That, that global requirement is a little rough, too. Like, this isn't that good of a card to require that kind of a thing. I know. But, well, and, and it's pretty – the global requirement is restrictive because you could see playing this card on Gen 7 and getting, like, you know – three or four activations off of it and getting some points and that's fine, but you can't play it on turn seven. It's like the, the heat's always too high. Right. So I don't know, man. I, I think frankly, this card, in my opinion, is an F. Um, so Zahir has a good point. Like if, if you have ants, this is a good combo card with that, right? I, I like that. I like that. I think that would be a good combo, but yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big if. Um, well, but think about it. It is a good combo. It's a point to turn. Right, ants is two, two ant, two, two uh, microbes for a point. Yep. But imagine, okay, so and I think ants cost ten or something like that. So let's say you're paying full price for those things. You're you're now in the thirty credit range to get a point a turn that doesn't bump your economy. It's yeah, just right. not even in that situation. It's not that great. Yeah, it's like the same reason we don't really like physics complex that much because it's just. It's points without the other benefits of the points. Yep. So how, yeah. how, how many conversations have we had about physics complex? I mean, like everybody loves that card, but it's just not good. Yeah, it looks like it is, and 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 again, it was very situationally can be, but we'll get to that someday. All uh, right. But as far as a, I haven't rated it yet, I'd probably give it like a D minus. I, I I can't go full F on it, but. You're probably right. I just hate it. I hate that card. No, yeah, I, I think F's fine too, honestly. All right, you ready? Next one. Go for it. Farming. What do we got uh, here? All right, farming costs sixteen. Uh, it needs to be plus four degrees Celsius to play it. It has a plant tag. Gives you two credit and plant production, as well as just two plants on its own. And it's just two points to play it. Um, yeah, sweet card. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, farming's great. I mean, it's um, uh, it's situational in the sense that um, it comes down pretty late. But for a late game card, it does a lot. I mean, the fact that it has two points on it um, already just makes its baseline case acceptable. You know, I mean, 19 credits for for two points is good. And usually when you're playing this, you have some sort of discount, you know, at that point. And it gives you f essentially four plants on the next generation. So many, many times farming is the difference between getting to play one more uh, plant 
on your last generation. So even if you play this, you know, on Gen 10 and you're going into Gen 11, those four extra plants are often the difference in playing another plant. So this card's, and in playing another plant's usually worth at least two, if not three points. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're getting into the range where you could, um, you could play this card for 19 credits for five points, which is strong. So I, I think farming's great. I, I think this card's really good. I, I don't take this out of my opening hand, obviously, because yeah. it's, you know, it's it's a late game card. So even though it's a strong late game card, I'm usually not taking this out of my opening 10. But um, I will look at this card, you know, mid game to late game and, and I'll be happy to pick it up. Yeah, I think those are all the points. Um, the, the, the late game nature of this card is often mitigated because the temperature track often gets filled up quicker than the oxygen track. So you do end up having a decent amount of time to play to get the benefits out of farming and not to mention the fact that it's just two points which you know we've we've conservatively said like five to six points for or five to six credits for a point so that's pretty good on its face um yeah and you know you said it like late game is when you want to be playing plants anyway and this is yeah, it's really good for for that at the end of the game. I, there's not much to say about it. It's just really solid. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a fishing card. Um, what do you think? What are you gonna What are you gonna give this one? Yeah, um, I don't think it go. It doesn't go any higher than a B for me. But um, I'm trying to think. So I usually play it substantially better than a standard project. Yeah, I think I think that that suits it. I, I'll go just straight B. Yeah, I think it's a B minus just because. Um, it, there is a, it's situational, but but it's it's really solid at the end of the game, and, and if you can use it, so I'm going to give it a B minus. Um, okay, yeah, good, good card. card. Okay, next one's a, a, a interesting card here. Opens up all kinds of discussion. Fishies. Okay, so fish costs nine. Look, it's Nemo. <laughs> Nemo getting devoured. <laughs> Um, oh man so fish is a blue card so once a generation you can activate it to put one animal on the card oh i should also mention it requires uh two degrees celsius on the temp track and you must decrease any plant production one step and then so it's one it's one point per fish on the card so what do you think yeah fish is great i mean we already reviewed birds. Um, if you haven't uh, checked out our other episodes, go check out that episode. And, the bee episode. <laughs> yeah, and and fish is similar. So there, there's three cards that are essentially one point per plant, uh, animal on the card. Those are fish, livestock, and birds. And all of them are very good. They're All of them are very good. Um, I think that fish is the best one of them, um, though you could make a case for livestock. The thing about fish is that the two degree uh, global requirement is it's the one that's usually met the fastest. Mm. Um, it's just in the in the end, in most games that I play, it seems like the heat goes up quickly, um, and it you can score a surprising amount of points on these cards. Um, I used to think that they were pretty underwhelming, but um, there's just so many cards that will randomly add an animal. Um, we just reviewed one earlier in this, you know, yeah, in, in this Kazma. in this session, Eos Chasma. But there's a bunch of space cards that do that. Um, there's um, the the large convoy, and you know these other things where I mean, it's it is it is a common scenario that one of these. You know, one of these one to one point animal cards will score you seven or eight points at the end of the game. The fact that they passively create points for you at the same time that they create a sort of a platform where you can you can add benefit from other cards, it's just really strong. Um, so, like, imagine playing fish on turn on Gen Eight. You've already gotten a good deal out of this card in that you're going to score two to three points off it for twelve credits. Um, and mind you, you're going to hit somebody's plant production, which could be annoying, you know, it, which, which could yep. cost them a few points. 
But you, that's its like best. That's its like worst scenario. But it's so easy to score another two or three points on these. I, I really think of these cards now as um, as sort of a, a unique type card type. And I will actually take fish early. I like the the fact it's so reliable that these things will score you cards or points. Sorry that that I will I will often take one of these because they're sort of an indispensable resource. Like when we talk about other cards, you know, that are good, but I we don't prioritize them early. Like farming, for example. That's because there's tons of other cards in the game that do something like farming. Maybe not quite as efficiently, but they're close. These one-to-one -one point to animal scorecards are unique um, in that there's only three that will that will do that for you. Um, and they can just be so powerful late game. Yeah, great, great points. The, and like the the thing that really puts fish over some of the other animal cards. And I, I, I can't remember if you mentioned this or not. Sorry if you did, but the the high temp cost on it often means you're going to get a lot of uh, several generations to play it, uh, just because of the what I said earlier, which is the temp track fills up quicker often. So th this this puts it over birds solidly for me because of that. Um, now. And uh, correct. Uh, what is life livestock? You have to have. Um, you, it takes your own plants, right? Well, what livestock does is it hits your own plant production, right? But it has it, it has the most permissive global requirement, and that it 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 can come out a little earlier than fish and birds, and mm -hmm. and for that reason, and what one of uh, one of our viewers had made a comment that they think that's one of the better ones. I don't disagree with that. You could make an argument that livestock is better. What I don't like about livestock is that when you telegraph these plays early, it, it tends to invite people to play the hate cards like predators or the other things that take animals off of you. Whereas yeah. fish and birds can disguise it a little bit more and you can quarter, sort of do this burst scoring with them that I think is really good. Um, but but livestock is also in the in the discussion. I mean, it, it's very strong. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I mean, suddenly you're reminding me that these cards are great with Inventrix, <laughs> right? Like get, getting them out early is so sweet. So keep that in mind if you're trying to if you're playing Inventrix. These are good cards to have. Yeah, I huh. think I think fish is an A minus. I I think it's really good. I I you know like I would not have thought of I would not have thought of it being so high in general, but like, you know, if you think that, if you think that this game, you know, there's what, 220 or 230 cards in the base game. If you're playing a three player game, you're, you're likely to see one of these one-to-one -one point scoring cards in, in, the, in the whole game. And in that setting, I want one of these almost every single game, right? Yeah. So like, I think that that makes it an A minus. Like I, I will take this card out of my opening ten as a speculative heap, just because they can be so strong at the end. So I, I think it's an A minus. Right. I, I think I'm there with you. This this is probably my favorite animal card. Um, it's it's tough between this and livestock. Um, definitely not birds. Definitely not small animals. Definitely not pets. Pets is good, but um yeah i think i'm there with you a minus what uh we we do have uh some illustrious uh viewers today i don't know if uh, <laughs> private is a very strong uh player so so are the others david and zay here that are that are commenting uh would love to hear your guys uh thoughts on this one um i'm giving an a minus uh but uh go ahead and throw your grade in the comments cool all right. Um, we still we've got, got time we got for, time for yeah, a couple more, actually. We okay. do these for about an hour. Um, all right, here we go. This is the, this is the Private O'Malley Special. <laughs> all right, flooding. Flooding, all right. Um, yeah. Nima, what does this one do? Okay, flooding's an event that costs seven. Uh, you place an ocean tile. If there are tiles adjacent to this ocean tile, 
You may remove four mega credits from the owner of one of those tiles. Ouch. So, and it also decreases your uh, points by one. <laughs> And look at yeah. the look at the flavor text. Look out for tsunamis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this isn't an interesting one. Like it's okay. So this this is this feels to me like a very good early card. So you you get this beginning. You can the ocean can get you those two cards. It can get you titanium. It can get you steel. Um. Now, for for the maximum benefit, you really want to put this next to someone, obviously, to, to, to decrease. So if, if you can do that, this can be a pretty pretty rough card. Um, what do you think? This is great. I'm just looking at the at the chat here, and we have we have S tier from one person and another that says yeah. F. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's divisive. I like that. Well, so I think that you you hit the nail on the head there, Nima, which is that basically this card's good if it gives you some utility and you can take advantage of itself uh, or and you can take advantage of the negative four credits, which, which can be devastating early game, right? I mean... Yeah. You know, so so let, let's think about what this card does. So you spend 10 credits on this card and you get, let's say you pick up two cards uh, on the two card spot. Okay, that's already good. Two cards is probably worth, you know, what, four or five credits or something like that. You get a money production or a mega credit production because it's a TR boost. And so you get most of that money back. And if you can hit four credits from somebody, that's a lot of utility. That's good. Um, the negative one point is annoying, but it's not it's not a deal breaker because essentially you're getting this for almost free. Um, and the card really shines if you have um, discounts, like if you have media archives or you know sure. things like that. Or you know one of the one of the viewers had mentioned um, the other boards of the game. So one of the other boards has a milestone that's for the first, you know, the first to five uh, event cards, you know, like things like that are, it, obviously it gives it more value. Um, I don't love this card. I, I don't, I mean, it, the sum of its parts is good. Um, and it definitely has utility. I just find that um, in general, I'm more interested in developing my own board than than hurting other people and a lot of the utility of this card is in the four credits that you take from somebody else i mean i think that um, that could really change the math for somebody's whole turn early and i don't know i just find that that's not a huge focus of my game well well whether it's a focus or not i think it is powerful but so like the, the problem with me with this card is it's hard to line up everything to make it useful Right. Like it's hard to, OK, I, I want to place an ocean on the two card spot. Well, well, there's no one there for me to steal money from. Well, shoot. OK, uh, where else? You know, it's, it's hard to line it up in a way that makes it worth it. And that's what makes this not a great card to me. Yeah. Private's mentioning that this is sort of like an ocean rush card when you, you want to sort of increase the number of oceans quickly to, to do something, you know, whether it's a card, a card global requirement or. Yeah. It, that feels too, that, like that feels like the cost is too high for that. I mean, I am like, if that's a very situational thing, I suppose, if, if you really need to get the notion out there, then okay. But um, that, that better be really worth it to you. Cause if you're not making maximum benefit out of it, then that's, it's pretty, it sucks. Right. I, I agree. And I, I mean, the thing is, like, if if you're trying to rush a card to, to if you're trying to rush an ocean global requirement card and you have to play flooding in order to do it, you've probably lost the efficiency that would have made that card good to begin with. Right. Like, yeah, you know, I like if you're going to if you're talking about like ice asteroid, like, OK, I'll take that one. Um, I like that one better. You don't get the negative one point. Um, which which matters. I mean, negative one points is, is seven, eight credits, sure. right? I mean, so you're talking, um, you know, whatever, you get the double bonus. I mean, what Private's comment here, like, you, you can line up some sweet turns if you have Arctic Algae and you place this and you get a bunch of plants and you play something and get some, you know, like, there are ways to kind of combo with this, but I don't like it. Um, Kyle Coaster says, worse than Black Polar Dust. Which... <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's uh well eh, um yeah um it's yeah um and, and know, pri so I... private co comment is that you do get the tr bump with it so the negative one point essentially makes it a wash and, sure. and that is a good point that that's a good point oh does it hear said that yeah yeah um... I don't know. I'm I'm kind of landing on a D for this. Man, I yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm landing on a D too, man. All I right. think that's not my favorite thing, but all right. Um, here we go. Food factory. Oh, food factory. Okay, so cost 12 has a building tag. You have to decrease your plant production one and it increases your credit production by four and it has a point on it. This card, man, I... Okay, so when, when is this card good? Uh, clearly, you know, early game, you want to get this down. Um, so that means... You're, it's it's almost a contradiction in strategy, right? Like you want this down early, yet for some reason you have plant production, uh, which you probably shouldn't have too much of early. So like what, I, I guess it's a good eco line card, um, which isn't saying a whole lot, I guess. But um, yeah, I mean, 12, 15, 12 or 15 costs on this card. So, it, you know, it'll take you minimum three generations to make the money back probably four um yeah building tags good i don't know let's let's just talk about what i said so far <laughs> i think this one's just not good i mean it's the to me this is just like um filler that you would play late game if you just need to score some points but it's exactly what you said nima it's a, like it's a contradiction in its um in its use case, right? Like the card is overpriced because of the point on it, right? Like if this card cost four and it didn't have a point on it, okay, I would do that. I would play that early, well, right? Four would, four would be undercosted, but yeah. Well, no, if it didn't have a point on it, right? The point's worth five or six credits, maybe seven credits or something, five or six or something like that. So like if you said this card's okay six credits a building tag and whatever is written on it but no points i might play that early if i were playing eco line but the 12 credits is too expensive to play early and the plant production hit early is huge right i mean if you lose six or seven plants off of this that's a lot um yeah i i don't know i mean it's just not it's not good i mean when I usually play this card, it's at the end of the game when I've got some steel sitting around and I'm kind of, it's not going to mess up my last plant, per, you know, the, my plant placement. Um, and I'm like, okay, sure, it's a point. Or if I have discounts and it's cheap. You're trying to go for banker, maybe. <laughs> right. It, well, that's a good point, Nima. Actually, that's, that is a good point. That is a situation when I have played this card before is to sneak out a, a, a bunch of credit production for banker. You're absolutely right there. Um, and, and some of the comments in the chat are about uh, some of the um, alternate um, corporations. Robinson Industries is one where you, you can bump your lowest production for four credits. That's awesome with this, of course, right? I mean, if you can, if you can bump a plant production for four, then you're getting this uh, you know, much cheaper. So um, I don't know, I, this card's underwhelming. Yeah, to put it lightly, I mean, I think this is probably a D minus for me. I, I, no, I've never once played it. Also, what's that picture from? <laughs> um, I, I, well, we got we got some people growing some stuff in a in a dome. I mean, it's and, like uh, it's like, like from like, the 1970s. <laughs> I mean, look at what that. I mean. But, well, it's kind of funny. It looks like the people outside are like mowing the lawn or something. <laughs> like one of them's got the lawn mower, and one of them's got the edger, and they're like. <laughs> they're mowing the martian soil yeah the other people are just like eating grapes <laughs> yeah we okay man this this car's telling more of a story man we got a caste system in mars all of a sudden i we guess got the, got the worker class toiling what are you thinking here <laughs> what, what are you going to give this one i'm going to give this um a c minus 
It's that that high? No, I, I'm 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 like D D minus territory here. Okay, I mean it's not like there's nothing about this card that's like horrible. I mean it's a point. It's whatever. I mean yeah, I just... maybe, maybe that D minus is too high. I, I I'll go D plus. You're right. Okay. All right. Last card for this session, Nima. This is a good one. End on here. Fuel factory. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. This is a good one. This card costs six. It has a building tag. I uh, decrease your energy production one and increase your titanium and credit production one step. Uh, so, you know, six credits plus the cost of whatever energy to get titanium and, and credit production is pretty solid. Um, the, obviously, the easier you can get that energy, the better this card is. Um, you know, you don't don't really want to be doing standard projects ever if you can help it. Uh, even with a standard project, I think it's okay though. Um, you'll you'll make your your money back pretty quickly. Yeah, even mid game, I would say. What do you think? Yeah, fuel factory is great. I mean, this is like like you said, it's just an efficient card. Um, and the building tag is almost always relevant on a card that costs six credits. Yeah. Um, I mean, you definitely want to play this game early. And it, 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 there is a skill to playing TM where you have to figure out the expected yield on a card. Right? You know, like, okay, so you, let's say you spend nine credits on this and you spent an energy and you bumped your production by four. How many generations of that do you need for this to be... A net benefit like what, what are you looking at here to get out of the card and i usually settle somewhere around like if the card is going to net me 15 you know t 10 to 15 credits over the course of the game i'll usually think that's worth it to do it um but but all of these cards have an opportunity cost which is that you are are spending credits and energy on this when you could be spending that on something else. And so um, there it's you have to think about that break even point and what, what sort of yield you're gonna get out of the card. I rarely play this card past generation four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's worth thinking about that. But I think even then it's pretty decent though. Like if you if you have a cheap power, I I, I think generation four it's pretty worth it. Probably even five. That's what I meant, yeah. like past generation four. So I, I would play it on four. Five is starting to get dicey, right? So like, let's say you play this on five. You spent nine credits on it plus a power, and a power is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And then you're bumping by four credits. And so you have, let's say you have five generations of that production that's going to go into your economy. You generated 20 credits and you put in nine plus an energy to me. 20, 20 no, 23. If you, you get 18 plus five. Um, well, I don't understand your math at this point, but like, okay. like I'm saying you're generating four credits per generation and you're going to, and you're going to run that for five generations. If you play it on five, like you'll get six okay. through 11. So you get 20 I credits. I see what you're saying. Okay. But, um, if you're going to get 20 credits, but you're going to spend nine and a power on it, to me, you're starting to get into a territory where the yield is not worth it. Now, there's all kinds of things that can change that equation. Like, let's say you have uh, discounts, right? Like, let's say you played Earth Catapult. Well, that, I mean, now these cheap cards are really good because there's a sort of velocity of card play that will be possible with Earth Catapult, and this card is helped by that. Um, let's say you have steel that's just lying around. Let's say you have excess power and the power isn't like a huge cost to you. Suddenly, this is looking better. So a fuel factory is awesome. It's super efficient if you play it early. It's medium if you play it late. But it's, it's, arc, it's an archetypical type of card in that there's no points on it. And it's, you have to do this math in your mind is it worth it to play this? And um, I mean, on the Earth Catapult side too, it is worth noting that when you get cards that provide big discounts, these sorts of cards are even better because um, your money will go so much further 
So uh, the situation where you get these production cards is like these cheap production cards. When you have discounts, they tend to synergize uh, a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, but I mean, this is a is a titanium, so it doesn't go with the Lactro catapult. But I, I, I overall, I take your point. Um, yeah, no, this this is a sweet card, man. Early on, it's just excellent. I think I, I think I give it a straight B. I agree. It's a B. It might even be, yeah, it's a B because it definitely tapers off quickly. The Electro Catapult, you, I will still play Electro Catapult even sometimes on Gen 6 or 7 if the oxygen requirement isn't ex exceeded because it has a point on the card, mm -hmm. right? So um, even if you're going to make like, if you're only going to make like eight credits out of Electro Catapult, fine, you still scored a point. That's a big difference with Fuel Factory and all the cards like Fuel Factory where it's a strict uh, economy question. There's no points on there to, to, to defray that. Okay. Yeah, so cool. I agree. B. B, there we have it, man. That's where we're back. We did it. So, uh, Nima, uh, great card evaluation session. Thank you so much for everybody who came on and, and joined and checked it out. Yeah. Come back. We'll we'll try to increase our cadence a bit here. Um, I had you know I had fun doing this again, so I hope you did too, Nate. Oh, always. Um, it's always fun to uh, hang out with you, Nima. Um, dude, when are you moving back to Albuquerque? <laughs> soon, soon. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in and catch us on YouTube and Twitch, Cardboard for Mars, um, Twitter at Cardboard Mars. Um, we'll sign off on the YouTube video. Um, I'm Nima, and that's Nate. Keep terraforming. Take it easy.